Welcome back. In this video I'm going to restore this vintage showcase. It was given to me by a friend who found it in the garbage on a construction site here in New York City. And it seems like all the parts were there. And it was just such a beautiful combination of elements. It's got this brass frame, cast iron feet. It was in an old building and they were restoring the building and they were about to throw this away. And my friend Anthony called me and said, I think you should take this. It might make a good video. And that was a year ago. And now finally, I'm getting to it, uh, primarily because a friend needs a showcase. And I said, I have the pieces of one. And so the first step was to start taking it all apart and really dissecting it. It came with just the frame, the bottom, and one piece of glass. You'll see by the end of the video, it takes several pieces, but just the big, broad front piece is all we had. Now that frame was all soldered together, but the soldering joints, uh, the two main uprights were broken off there. So I start taking it apart. This isn't as much of a restoration as it is a rehabilitation. I wanted to keep the texture, this vintage look, this old rusted weathered look, but just clean it up a little bit. So here you can see it's all the original paint still on it. I'm just loosening it up, getting whatever's flaking off, and I'm mixing about 50-50 stain with a satin polyurethane. And I just like the way that looks when it dries. Stain alone takes too long to dry, but with the polyurethane it kicks a little bit faster. And you see the original varnish is all allergated there. I like that texture, so I made sure it stayed. It took about two coats to finally get an even sheen. The first coat will dry with a couple of dull patches. And now here, just to preserve the rusted finish, I got all the loose paint off and the, the loose rust, and I gave it a coat of lacquer. You can see how easily that varnish is just sanding off. That's got to be the original paint. It just comes right off. And I just get off what's loose, fixing all the cracks. Like I said, this wasn't a perfect re restoration. It was really more of a rehabilitation. And now I start to confront the joints there, the two uprights that you saw in the very beginning. They would have been soldered there. I contemplating soldering it, but I realized if I soldered it, I would have had to heat up the whole joint all the parts and they probably were soldered before some of the wood was put in it so I didn't want to run the risk of softening up the the solder joints that were was still good so it occurred to me that I could probably use epoxy and so that's what I tried this is the actual frame for what becomes basically like the fish tank part of the showcase the showcase itself this is the back frame which is going to carry four doors which which were pretty much intact. One of the four sliding doors in the back is missing its glass. The frame needed some tightening up. There were a couple of joints that were just disconnected. There you could see the one door that needs glass. The doors are in great shape. There really wasn't much wrong with them at all. So I just sanded them, got rid of the loose paint and the loose finish, and just gave them, again, about two coats of that. And uh, while I'm restoring various parts, I start putting back some of the parts that can go back together just to check my progress as I'm going and I'm sanding the brass which looked like wood in the beginning of the video now this is all the brass I'm sanding it with like a 320 neoprene pad there I think it's a 3M product here you see me putting these pegs this is the best way I could think to align the joints on the corner glass comes together at each corner so there's three pieces of glass coming together right at this joint so by putting this quarter inch peg in there, and you can see once the, all the epoxy is cured, I use West Systems epoxy with the filler just to thicken it up. Right there you can see. So I temporarily have it jigged up there so it's 90 and 90 from both sides. Mix up some more West Systems. I put that filler in there just to keep it more paste-like, a little bit more like peanut butter. So that I could kind of manipulate it and keep it where I want. And I fill that whole corner with epoxy and it was very very strong that peg helped keep everything aligned I epoxied it into the upright frames before I did anything let that cure and then I put it in the corner to keep everything aligned So sometimes it's better to do a glue up in stages like I did there now this was the only piece of glass that actually came with the the pile of junk we found in time we realized by using some Windex with that sandpaper you really got a, a much quicker cleaner finish 
Now we're ready to attach what would be the bottom and the two uprights to the, the top of the counter, which is facing the table. And uh, here you see me attaching the back with the original screws. I just took everything apart gently and now I'm slowly putting it back together. And this was a piece that was disconnected when we basically rescued it from the job site. See that when I'm nailing in midair, I'm using a chunk of steel underneath the hammer so it hits back. And now we are epoxying the corners to the other side. And what you see there is the, the three corners that would come together if you were standing at the counter. Just giving everything one clean coat. Again, two more coats, more or less. There you can see the rails. I actually had to replace them with a, a strip of hardwood on uh, one side. The rails were broken off. They carry the doors. And two coats of this polyurethane stain mix. And there we are. We're basically the frame is done. The epoxy felt strong enough. And now earlier in the video you saw me take out what would have been the uh, the brackets for the glass and now I'm just making them over it's just simply with fixed positions I never really like shelves that adjust because nobody ever adjusts them you make them where you want them and then those ugly holes are there for the rest of the life of the product and nobody ever uses them and so here just drill in the holes before we actually weld it together and I, I made the little joints I, I pocketed them on the bridge port there just so that all three would be exactly the same and here I just whip up a simple little jig so when I weld it, again, everything's exactly 90-90. Weld both sides, and I did bevel that joint, so the weld fills in a little bevel. You could see it there. So then I grind it flat, and there's a considerable amount of weld inside of the joint there still. Whenever I weld and grind, there's always a comment that says, Be careful you don't grind the weld away. I've been doing this for about... 25 years so pretty well aware of that and now here I'm just painting everything gold and this is that one door eighth inch glass I had the glass cut at a local glass shop that's eighth inch and I didn't want to break the door apart so I had it cut exactly the same size as the frame and you can't tell the difference and here this is me trying the glass in for the very first time and everything fit thankfully I didn't have to do go back and adjust everything and now I'm putting back in the same few strips that I popped out in the beginning of the video everything went right back into its original place I took the original nails out and I'm just using these small pin nails the pin nails are also uh, safer I feel like they wouldn't break the glass as easily as if I was to use an 18 gauge this is the original front piece of plate glass and for some reason it was a little short so I put spacers to raise it up and then that piece just barely captured it. Now these are the original corner pieces. These are like a little cove molding. And the original screws that go right in behind the brass. The brass had wood glued into them. And so that screw is going into the wood that's glued inside of those brass frames. All back into the original holes. And now this is a treacherous. Just flipping it up for the first time. Getting ready to put in what would be the top of the counter and I decided to glue the whole thing in as well as use the original strips of wood because this is just going to have a downward pressure on it the entire time it's just always going to want to just fall out so I just wanted as much adhesion and security as possible and so there I'm just tacking in what gets tacked in and then a few of the pieces there's one for the front and then the two for the sides they were both a little broken up so I glued them back together and put back in the best I could but again I have that glue in there that bronze colored silicone and now here we have a giant fish tank which weighs about 650,000 pounds and we're carrying it to the front room to put it on the original pedestal with those cast iron feet and you can see the maze that is my basement and there we go we got it on the cast iron feet and it's really starting to look like something now this sat in my basement for one full year just in a pile and the whole time I just kept saying should I give this away to somebody that will put it together and I'm happy that my friend needed a showcase it incentivized me to actually do it and now here we are putting the shelves in again I said I made those positions fixed and now these doors just pop in they just have enough room to kind of flex into place and there you go and I, I put a considerable amount of grease on there 
just furniture wax to make those move nicely especially since the fresh paint is kind of sticky and there's my ice pick on display it's the only thing we're going to be selling out of that case and there it is just polishing it off getting it ready it's going to be really fun to move that's going to be in a couple days I'm going to stretch wrap the hell out of it make sure there's no creaking twisting bending and hopefully that'll be enough I glued some of the other joints off camera so hopefully that'll be good enough for the move it's going about 150 miles outside of New York hope you got something out of this I'm happy that I saved this old relic it's a really beautiful piece and it's sad to see someone just discard it Yep, I'm glad that one's done. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. Thanks, Brett. Brett was my helper on this one.